This is China. No, I'm not wrong. It is China, not Paris. And this is not London. It is a district of a city in China. And this isn't an American Tesla either. It is one of the latest Chinese electric cars. And you've guessed right, this isn't an iPhone at all. It's a replica that's been shamelessly manufactured by the Chinese. But as the inventor of that very iPhone has said, we have always been shameless about stealing great ideas. China has successfully applied that idea and sees absolutely no problem in copying and pasting. In this video, we are going to talk about how local companies in the entire country are turning from copycats into market leaders and what is going to happen next. What did we have in mind when we said a Chinese phone 10 or 15 years ago? Such masterpieces as Nokia, Samsung, Sony Ericsson, or the iPhone with an inbuilt TV. The quality leaves a lot to be desired. Some devices broke down after the very first phone call. On the other hand, what has changed since then? Here's an iPhone 13, and that is a Chinese GNE G13 Pro. This is an iPhone 6, and here are its clones. Oppo F3 and F3 Plus. They've been copying for years and with no regret. But the difference is that 15 years ago, Chinese companies and factories were simply manufacturing replicas or just copying the designs of the devices. But it doesn't really matter. That is why the major brand of these Chinese markets in those times was Shanghai. The word in Chinese is a neologism which means fake. They counterfeited everything, including Audi keychains and cigarette packs, turning them into cell phones. However, everything started to change in 2007, when, on the one hand, the Chinese government called for a big fat tender for developing the country's homegrown third-generation mobile phone standard. Market leaders such as huge and unsinkable Nokia and Sony Ericsson made their bids for contracts at that point. But all the money and glory went to the local Huawei and ZTE. And as we can see, they didn't care about splitting budgets, but they did care about the technology. And sooner than later, they launched their first smartphones. And on the other hand, in 2007, Google launched its open Android operating system. Five years later, it was already running on a bunch of budget Chinese devices, and the whole world found out that Apple and Samsung were not the only brands. There were also Xiaomi, Meizu, Oppo, Vivo, Lenovo, Kumo. I am not going to sit here and enumerate all of them because there are at least 300 different smartphone producing companies in China. Yes, 300. What we should really keep in mind is that whereas 15 years ago all the microchips for Chinese cell phones were imported from Taiwan, today Chinese producers make the microprocessors themselves. However, some countries aren't the biggest fans of that. And the US's sanctions have practically destroyed the share value of Huawei and their spot as the leading producer of mobile microchips has been taken by the Taiwanese company MediaTek. The one that produced all those Nokias and many other counterfeit phones. But this is not going to stand in the way of the development of the country. The formula for success is no rocket science. First you copy everything you like, but you don't just stop there. You figure out how to create it by yourself. You find the money to develop it, and you don't just pocket this money. You actually make use of it. And if it works out, then obviously you face competition. And this competition is not always fair. In the end, you win if you're good enough. After all, out of the top five cell phone producers, there are three Chinese companies. And now let's check out the top 10 world leaders in car manufacturing. Right, there are no Chinese companies here, not yet anyways. Because the Chinese are taking the same path as with the smartphones. They are trying to copy everything. BMW, Volkswagen, Porsche, Ford, Hummer. They have even plagiarized the Mini and Daewoo Matisse. However, China has come to the next stage now. You look at their latest car models and you think they have stolen everything that could have possibly been stolen. But it is no longer so clear what exactly they have stolen and where from. All of that is getting old. Let's turn the page over. Take a look at this Chinese Tesla car. It is known as the Xpeng P7. Why does it resemble Tesla so much? It's a question for Elon Musk. To be more exact, this question should be addressed to his official statement from June 12th of 2014. Here is the quote from the statement. All of our patents are belong to you. So Elon Musk promises the whole world that Tesla is not going to file any suits against anyone who would want to rightfully use their technologies. Isn't this a rightful use? I must remind you that Musk grants patents to be used to the whole world since 2014. And it was in 2014 when a Chinese Xpeng emerged. Three years later, Alibaba makes a huge investment in the company and the following year sees the construction of a huge factory for it. 
In 2022, we see the latest Chinese electric vehicles being sold in Norway, Sweden, Denmark, and the Netherlands at a price which is about 10,000 euro cheaper than Tesla or their competitors from BMW. How does it work? It's because the company has immense support. In April of 2022, Xpeng received a credit line of 1 billion euros from the Agricultural Bank of China for the further expansion of its business activities. Do you see that instead of trying to win the internal combustion engine market, the Chinese invest in the markets that are just starting to emerge? Global electric vehicle sales in the first quarter jumped nearly 120% and Tesla hit sales records by delivering 310,000 vehicles. However, Xpeng Company looks even further and presents to the European market not only electric cars that can be driven on roads, but also the ones that can fly. For example, these Xpeng X2s. But sometimes it is Europe that goes to China. Take a guess, where is the real Paris? This one or that one? Can you guess here? Okay, here it is quite clear. This Eiffel Tower is fake. It's Chinese. Instead of 300 meters, there are only 108 of them. But a replica of Paris is not unique in China. Here, take a look. It is a highly elaborate replica of London. They didn't just pop up Tower Bridge. They tried to copy even the street layouts, the city's atmosphere. They brought the red telephone boxes, pubs, and lamp posts all the way from England. Not happy with the Chinese London? All right, well, here's the local Venice. To be more exact, it is the city of Suzhou, located to the west of Shanghai. There is also a replica of an Austrian village, Hallstatt, a mini Manhattan, a German town, a Dutch village, and even America's village of Jackson Hole. Welcome to Jackson Hole, China. All of this requires a lot of investment from Chinese developers. First of all, such places are built in order to take the load off the big cities, such as Shanghai. They're clearly suffering from overpopulation. But why do they need to make replicas of famous Western cities? There are two reasons for this. First, these projects draw more attention. Because in China, just like in Russia, everything and anything Western is a symbol of wealth and lavish lifestyle. Just for you to know, before COVID, the Chinese made up almost half of the luxury property buyers in France. They spent on average 11,000 euros on shopping per trip, and about 2 million of such shoppers visited France each year. And the ones who couldn't afford a trip to the real Paris or London had to settle for the fake Paris and London. And these houses are more expensive than properties in other parts of China. Moving to a district like this means that not only are you buying a new house, but getting a whole new lifestyle. In a replica of Jacksonville, you can enjoy golf courses and American fast food restaurants. In a copy of a British town, you can get some fish and chips or go for a five o'clock cup of tea. But there is another reason, a more practical one. It is the construction industry, a chance to invest money to use budgets. And for big projects like these, you can get more money. And no one cares that all these copies are half empty and located in the middle of nowhere. And a place like this would normally be packed, but it's pretty dead, so I'm just like, it feels very strange being here right now. But as they say, there are lots of Chinese people, and so sooner or later, they will settle here. However, the government of China has decided to pull the plug on this attempt to imitate everything Western. They are trying to stop building copies of cities and skyscrapers. The cities turned out to be a complete failure, and the skyscrapers are causing overpopulation. This is why now China has taken the course to promote its own culture and architecture above all else. These three Chinese examples, telephones, cars, and cities, show very well what works and what doesn't. It is possible and even necessary to copy stuff if it results in something original in the end. You should invest in something that might lead to something groundbreaking, and the biggest investment should go to industries where the breakthroughs are already starting. Nothing good is going to come out of straightforward imitation. Don't be afraid of copying. Invest and never imitate. See you in the future.